Welcome to Dropping Gems After Show. On this episode, we'll be sharing the extended version of my interview with Linda Boney. She is a certified feng shui consultant. She graduated from Feng Shui Alliance School and has more than 20 years of experience in corporate sector, city, government, and nonprofit industry. She offers one-on-one -on -one virtual, phone, and in-person consultations. Stay tuned because you don't want to miss this. You are watching Dropping Gems After Show. Venice Richards, your pure romance consultant, inspires women to enhance their intimate lives and take care of their sexual health. Book your party today. Visit pureromance.com slash Venice Richards or call 631-943-1868. For more information or to place an order. We are having a giveaway. We are giving away a Roku premiere valued at $50. You could watch live TV or do HDR streaming. Most importantly, you can catch past and present episodes of Dropping Gems. In order to win this Roku premiere, all you have to do is tag me on Instagram at Dropping Gems with a Z and use the hashtag Meditative Moment Challenge. You could share your favorite quote, inspirational picture, or your favorite meditative pose. The winner will be selected this fall. For inquiries, for sponsorship, or advertising on this program, email info at KeishaChristian.com for more information. Welcome to Dropping Gems, an academy for holistic studies. Learn how to treat seasonal allergies and year-long allergies naturally with Keisha Christian. Her courses have helped parents, teachers, naturalists, and therapists reassess the way they handle allergy symptoms. Registration to our class is now open. Reserve your spot today. You can also become a certified holistic studies practitioner with us. Be empowered with knowledge and help us in spreading the positivity with the rest of the world. Visit www.droppinggemsacademy.com or email us at info at keishachristian.com. Hello, everyone. And I have to tell you, thank you, Linda. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming on my show today. I'm so blessed to have you, and I have to let everyone know, I met Linda a few years back when we used to do holistic bazaars together, and she's such a beautiful soul, light, and I have to say, I am so thankful we come around full circle now that she's on my show, and she has blessed on my show with her presence. I thank you for sharing space with me today, and for giving your knowledge and your expertise on feng shui to my audience. Thank you so much for coming on. You're very welcome. Thank you, Keisha, for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes. So I want to know, what made you want to even learn feng shui? And can you even um, describe to my audience what is feng shui exactly? Well, feng shui means wind and water. The words feng and shui means wind and water. And it's about how we as individuals are represented and mirrored on our space and how our space mirrors ourselves. Similar to when we have that saying, you are what you eat. Well, in feng shui, you are where you live. Wow. And to your second, yes. And to your second question, it was personal experience. I had trouble sleeping, not just one night, not just two nights. For years, I had trouble sleeping. Uh, I was always sickly. I had the chart when I went to, I was in my 30s at the time and I had a chart of an 80 year old. My doctor said my chart was this thick. And he's like, what are you doing? What's going on? And I had no clue as to what was happening. But I actually knew that I slept better in my boyfriend's house and my friend's house better than my own house. So I knew something was going on in my house. I just couldn't pinpoint what it was. So then my friend told me about feng shui and I'm like, what's feng shui? She's like, oh, you put some candles in the relationship corner and, and bring love into your life. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. So I went to the library, not planning on looking for a feng shui book, but it found me. And when I opened the book, he shut, I just shut it closed quickly because I'm like, oh my God. And I don't like the term feng shui is bad or good, but I had textbook bad feng shui. I was sleeping in the attic and I was sleeping by the door. My bed was by the door this way. So I was, and I saw the staircase coming up and feng shui, that's ill health walking up and coming up to you. 
I was sleeping underneath a beam, so the beam was cutting my midsections. That's why I was having ulcers and stomach issues. I was sleeping opposite my TV. The TV was acting as a mirror. So I was just getting hit at all sides completely. So what I did was the book said to move my bed away from the door. So I said, okay, that's kind of simple. I could do that. So I moved it away from the door. It's the, bed, the door was still hitting my bed, but at least I was away from that energy, that harsh energy. We call it sharp cheek. I slept better than I did in a long time. And I actually had more energy. And I woke up and I go, wow, I'm having more energy. And I didn't have a job. I, and people were saying, oh, you have bad luck. These are you know, your curse, things like that. And I didn't understand why they were saying this. But that was because my house was ultimately making me sick. So I got a new job. I was working at J.P. Morgan Chase. I noticed they were using feng shui in their businesses and the offices. I'm thinking, you know, this is something here. And I just gobbled every book that I could get up on it. So I just, I just loved it and became, eventually became a feng shui consultant because of the principles of it. Oh, wow. That is amazing. So um, there's something that I like to talk about as far as sacred space and um, the space mm -hmm. you live in, you have to treat it in a sacred manner. Yes. So, that that how it, um if you look at the connection with that it um mm -hmm. it actually can affect your health it can affect your finances mm -hmm. it could affect you socially yes. emotionally yes. wow so feng shui is really um it goes along with living holistically and i never yes, realized like i know i heard the term feng shui you have to have your your furniture a certain way or you have to have mm -hmm. things a certain way in your home or your room mm -hmm. But I never realized how it could make such a connection with your, like, your actual physical health. Yes. yes never. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That is really yeah. interesting. So um, can you tell us, you know, leading into this, what are some misconceptions about feng shui? Because all I know about feng shui really is like you need to have your furniture placed a certain way. <laughs> so I'm sure there are <laughs> misconceptions about it. So can you share? What are some misconceptions? Well, some misconceptions is that think people think that it's a religion or it's woo-woo, and it's not. It's the art and it's a lot of science and a lot of it's common sense. If I'm sitting in a certain place and I'm by the door, Somebody could throw something at me, I'll get hit. But if I'm away from a door, I can see the person coming at me. I can see what's happening. I have more of an inclination to be able to react and get away from that person who's hitting me. So that's common sense to me. So, but it's an art, it's a science. And there is a part about doing moving furniture, but it also goes deeper than that because feng shui can help your relationships. It can help your family. It can help you find another job, get more recognition at work. It improved my mother and my relationship because I was a clutterholic. I had so much clutter and I just couldn't get away from that. And feng shui really, really helped me get rid of the clutter, let it go, and bring my mother and I much better together. And I actually got my own apartment as a result of moving out of my house, my apartment, my room, because I had my room was such a better place and I felt so much better in it. So like you said, sacred space, it became my sacred space. And I felt enough where I can move on my own and have my own fully sacred space in my own apartment. Wow, so with that, you also learn to let go. Yes. So with yes. feng shui, and not even like letting go of material things, but it probably mm -hmm. went to other areas of your life where you were able to let go of things that no longer serve you, which yes. could be relationship or whatever. So Yes. Oh, wow. Feng shui is really on a deeper level than deeper level. I actually thought. Wow. <laughs> that is really quite interesting when you incorporate feng shui in your life and then you becoming mm -hmm. a consultant i'm sure you saw things yeah. flow much better like the energy flow I, yes yeah like completely, a river completely completely yeah just that's exactly it just like a river wind and water just like a river you don't want to have anything blocking it you want to have flow and energy and that's what it's just about it's making the space just like a river in your home flowing nicely flowing evenly so that way things can come to you and then just have opportunities um, open up to you nice wow i'm just like and, uh, i'm so mm -hmm. amazed by this because like i'm thinking about so many things like as far as like um we talk about like you know your food how you prepare your food yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just thinking about how you dress like this can yes. be applied to so many areas like certain colors that you wear certain colors yes definitely certain colors there's actually a school for it from um, fashion feng shui oh wow <laughs> fashion feng shui cooking fashion feng shui, shui. cooks feng shui <laughs> <They're> actually, <laughs> oh, these are all 
um, actual schools? Like, um, you could actually yes, learn yes. this? You can actually learn this, yes. There's a color, like I'm wearing the color, color orange in feng shui is the earth element. I love earth. But it's also very bright and very vibrant. You're wearing fuchsia, which is my favorite color. It's also my logo color, too. <laughs> So I love it. So you're also very bright, very vibrant. If you wear black, black is also associated with, with career and power. So if a lot of people wear black, that's fine too. So all the based on your element, because we are all made of elements, the five elements in the um, feng shui. Oh, wow. I'm thinking about the chakras and how that And the aligns. chakras too. Yes, the chakras are also related as well. I'm actually currently in school working on my international, so my international certificate, and we're learning how the chakras are also related to feng shui as well. Yeah, because you said orange is your earth element, and we think of orange yes. when you're talking about your chakras. That's actually your lower chakras, the um, your orange, sacral, yes. your sacral, your sacral, sacral chakra. chakra. Yes. Yeah, your mm -hmm. seat of creativity and all of mm -hmm. that. Wow, okay. And then yes. me, I just decided to yes. wear fuchsia, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And you didn't know, see? <laughs> yeah, I just I believe you intuitively know it. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Like there's certain things like if I want to brighten up my day or I want to bright I will wear things and I will I will make myself up to feel um to feel yes. the mood that I want to feel. You understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. If I'm feeling down, I'll good. do something to make me feel the mood I desire to feel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yeah. All right. And um, can you give me an example who someone wants to increase their wealth or money? What is something um, that they would have to do? So can you give me an example of that? Yes. One of the examples is with my wonderful client, Sarah, as many years ago, she wanted, she came to me to look for, well, um, improve her wealth and her, she wasn't getting much clients. And she actually worked in one of the hotels downtown in Manhattan so she doesn't have a sign saying her name. She's actually in an office in the hotel. So when I got there, it wasn't so much about she looking for wealth. She wasn't even being seen. Her name wasn't even on the marquee. It was the former person who owned the office. So it actually was literally a quiet place. That was the name of the former company, and it was a quiet place. So she wasn't bringing any clients in. <laughs> Function could be very literal that way. So what we did is we first we changed the marquee. So she actually put her name double twice, her full name and also her name, her company name, Tools of Longevity. Her office was blue. So we painted the colors green for prosperity, for abundance. She added some plants and I gave her recommendations and she just ran with it. I also told her to get a beautiful painting on the, one of the walls. That was a main wall. It's called like the fame wall for bringing an um, horizon expansion depth. And she got a beautiful landscape painting with mountains and a beautiful roadway just like that with flowing of energy and she increased her business she actually started working with Soko de Soleil as an on-call um, massage therapist and she went back to Wisconsin she made her own business products her own massage therapy products oh nice wow mm -hmm. so um we're looking at color um we're looking I'm, at thinking, color. I'm thinking about even like when you talked about something simple as her changing the name, her she had yes. the quiet place, so mm -hmm. it's going to be quiet because if it's quiet, no customers. So even right. um the vibration of words, yes. Mm -hmm. So um with that, because I I um often speak of um affirmations quite free quite frequently yes. because speaking mm -hmm. speaking certain words over yourself. So yes. we're looking at the vibration of the words. So you um changing that changing the color wow so vibrationally you just changed her whole space yes and it's funny we do these things unintentionally we don't realize mm -hmm. that we're creating our own blockage vibrationally yes. exactly and it's just changing and doing simple things definitely will help with that wow mm -hmm. wow so can you tell me When should one consider having a feng shui consultation? One should consider having a consultation when you're feeling stuck, when things are not really flowing in your life and you're not sure understanding why, or you're doing a lot of things and you're, you're almost like you're just running the hamster wheel, but nothing is working. I have one client that had, she's taken classes with Tony Robbins. She's a business coach. She was doing everything was wonderful in her life. But when we met, she said, wait a minute, I'm, I, gave, I was actually in a business coaching um, group at that time. 
She said, then I went back home and I did all the things you recommended. You're coming to my house next week because I realized the key was her home. She made the connection that it wasn't everything. She was doing everything right, but it was her home that wasn't supporting all the new changes that she was making in her life. So that's one of the things that would help. Uh, if you have problems in your marriage, your relationships, you're not getting, you're not finding a job or you keep finding jobs and you kept losing them. That was another thing that happened to me when I found out what was happening with feng shui, particularly my house was connected to that and I changed it so I was able to keep jobs that were stable, things like that. Any, any number of things. If you're looking to move or sell a house, feng shui is probably number one in that because it helped my mother's our house to sell. After people were just telling her to just sell outright, sell to an investor, you're not going to get any money from it. The changes we made, she sold a house at top dollar. And that's when my, my feng shui master came into my life because I was actually volunteering at the learning annex at the time. And she said, Linda, you need to do this. Do, you need to do this. This is your calling. This is your passion. Like, I didn't do anything. You told us what to do. And she's like, no, 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 no. You don't understand me. This is your calling. This is your passion. This is what you're meant to do. And that's why I studied as a result. You mentioned a feng shui master. So how does one, like say you were, say you, this is something that you wanted to study and actually um, become a master. How can one become a master and about how long would that take to achieve? Well, the, the actual master master is about 60,000 hours. So they, they have that classification because they've done that. But a master can also, I studied for two years and I also have still continued education. I also study for businesses to help my businesses improve and grow. So and any number of classes, but definitely you want to make sure that the person is certified because feng shui, I mean, is nothing going to happen, nothing detrimental, but you want to make sure you're, in, you're working with people's lives and you want to make sure you get the right person to do that. Someone who's qualified, who has the background, who's done the, um, the feng shui consultations and has the degree to approve it. And to nice. show for it. With 60,000 hours? Wow. 60,000 hours, yes. <laughs> like, I'm interested. So those, those are, not what, that I'm not a master, but those are my real masters. Those are my, <laughs> so, my what would be involved in those things. hours? Just giving consultations, or I'm just, I'm curious. Giving, consultation, yeah, giving consultations, learning, educating yourself. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Um, I've heard of, um, I might be pronouncing this wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've heard of, um, um, Baga. Bagua. Bagua. Yeah. I've, Bagua. Heard that term. I've heard the term, but, um, can you tell us exactly what that is? The Bagua. Ba means eight and Gua means every aside. So it's an eight sided arrangement. It's almost similar to looks like a, a stop sign. I actually have one right here. I probably can't okay. see it very well. But. So as she has, the Bagua relates to every part of our lives. There's a part of our home that represents family. There's a part of our home that represents relationships. Part of our home that represents career. There's a part of the home that represents money, wealth, <laughs> prosperity. Everyone wants to know about that corner. <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. There's a part for helpful people, fortunate blessings. And in the center is health. So we can put that in our room. We can put it um, in the floor plan is where I use the diagnosis space. So it's pretty much my own blueprint to help someone look at the space through their floor plan and let them know what areas they need to be worked on. Yeah, so I'm interested. But that's not all as a feng shui. But that's not, that's not the feng shui. Everyone thinks that this, that's another misconception, that this is feng shui. This is not only feng shui. This is the tool related to feng shui. Yeah, so you actually use that as a way to map out where these areas are in your space. Yes, I do. Okay, yes, that's, do. so you yes. use that as a tool. So I'm curious yes. to know. Where is the money corner? <laughs> the money corner is, so when you have a bagua, you, everyone has a way to enter the door. So it's either you enter your door into the left side, the right side, or the middle. So the normal, the top left corner of any room or your house, your property, your land, that's where the wealth corner is. Oh, okay. I didn't know I was doing feng shui. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually my prayer that's, corner. That's funny. That's that's my prayer corner. The um mm -hmm. the that um the wealth corner. I didn't even know that, you know. But the, I, <laughs> I made that my prayer corner. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and mm -hmm. where that's exactly is the love corner? The love area. I think I need the to love area. That area is, up. <laughs> <laughs> is the top right left? The top right corner. Oh, the top right corner would be your love yes. area. Okay. Yes, your love relationships, marriage, and also relationship with yourself as well. Oh, okay. All right. I think I'm on the right track. 
Yeah. You're on the right track. I have a beautiful mm-hmm. picture of myself. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so I guess, you know, love for self, which is like love for self. a beautiful thing. So I got to put yes. some more stuff in there. Mm-hmm. Put some yeah. pairs. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll put a pair. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Put a pair of an item that's in pairs. All right. That's good to know. That mm-hmm. is so good to know. Wow. So, I like in my corner, I'm sorry, in my corner, I have the president, I have a President Obama and his wife, Michelle, because when they were doing the inauguration and they're walking down the, um, the street, I just love that, that, I'm getting chills, that, that just captures the essence of who they are, the love, the relationship, the, that just means everything to me. So I put, I actually went in an auction, I was going to save it till when I moved to my old apartment, but I said, I'm going to with my mom. And I said, I have to put it here now. This is where I have to put it. So when I see it, if I feel vibrant, I feel love, I feel happy. And they're, they represent a beautiful, loving couple. So you want to put up here of a couple that you love. You don't have to know who they are. you just a beautiful couple, a man and woman. And make sure they're both facing each other face-wise. If they're having, maybe their back is turned or something, you want to make sure that you see both their faces on. In front, up front. Okay, Wow. All right. It's like, it's so funny. The things that you mentioned, I just do it intuitively. I didn't know. I didn't know that because I'm just thinking about the things you're saying. Like, well, I've done that intuitively, mm-hmm. even how placing mm-hmm. my furniture intuitively for things to flow. Wow. My, um, I look at my space as a sacred space. So mm-hmm. making sure you're clearing out clutter, clearing out energies. Yes. Um, I'm thinking even... Can feng shui be related to um, someone who wants to release weight as far as like yes. their refrigerator or their, their food pantry? Their food pantry and the refrigerator, yes. You want to make sure you have healthy foods there and not too much junk foods. You want to make sure it's constantly clean because that kitchen is really the heart of the home, where we eat, where we live, where we do our um, – people have their families meeting there. Every, every, usually this, the, the kitchens become the nucleus of the home. And then you also have the stove. You want to cook properly on the stove. So making sure the stove is working well, making sure all the burners are working properly. If anything is broken, you have to fix it because broken items represent something light in your life that's broken as well. So having a refrigerator clean out of healthy foods, not, not junk foods or anything, and having it full. If it's an empty refrigerator, every time you open it, you're going to start feeling empty. You're going to start feeling, there's a, there's a my spirit saying, there's a lack, a sense of lack going on. You want to have it filled with rich and well and healthy and the rich foods. Wow. Okay. So make sure anything that you have spoiled in your refrigerator that you actually exactly. get rid of it. Um, things right. that have expired. So constantly cleaning out the refrigerator, wiping out the drawers and everything yes. and getting rid of anything that's spoiled. Okay. This is really deep for me. I didn't even realize feng shui went this deep, how it could just apply to all areas of your life. I'm thinking even mm-hmm. now your car, like, it is, would it be important yeah. mm-hmm. too, as far as your car, like washing your car, making sure inside of it? Yes. Clean? Yes, exactly. Now she put the bagua on top of the car too as well. Also, also, um, as far, you could use the bagua on the car. So you actually have a wealth car. corner and a relationship, the same thing as in a home? Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. how does that apply because it's like you're not some people are not in their cars all the time so i'm just not in all the cars all the time but so you can actually kind of put in the principles of it you can actually make sure your car is working because it works on everything so function is about your whole aspect of your life so you want to make sure your car is also working in good condition it's also clean it's not junky um it's running well if there's something broken again fix it make sure it's not running because again it could be reflecting on your life or something happening you may not know it's not in your house but if you, we do spend a lot of time in our cars with those who drive a lot they drive for hours for their work oh, okay wow i'm just like i'm blown away right now i really am <laughs> i'm just blown away so i'm like even thinking mm-hmm. about like your pockets when you know making sure or even women who um who have purses you know, yes. making sure that your, or your wallet, making sure that yes. um, you clean your wallet out, making sure that you, yes. making sure that you clean out your purse and you don't have like a bunch of receipts yes. and junk. Cause I know like with some women, cause I know my purse um, can get junky sometimes. So I know I don't even like relate it to that. Like, you know, feng shui. I just think about my space, you know, like where I live, making sure yes. that's clean. But I don't think mm-hmm. about other things like my car or my purse or even my pockets, making sure right. that I don't have like 
paper yes. and all sorts of things in my pockets. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, they really are affecting your whole space. Everything. Yes, exactly. So everything. one would have to think about everything that they're connected to. Yes. Oh, okay. Even we're all connected in our. We're, we're really, we're really connected in our space. Exactly. Oh. Okay. Our closets. Our closets represent the subconscious mind. So even though you think you're stuffing everything in the closet, no one can see it. Your subconscious, you will know that something's going on in this. You also want to have it cleared. You want to have the closet, the hangers organized, keeping it well. If you have clothes that you're not using anymore, release it, let it go so new things can come in. Usually I say if you bring one item and you buy one item, you have to let go of three items. Usually that's my motto for my clients. That I usually tell them, or more, you know, more. So everyone has a trouble letting things go, so usually just starting small is the best thing to do. But releasing it because then when you bring more things. Once I had a pant that I couldn't find, I bought jeans and I couldn't find my watch. And I was about to let my other jeans go. And out of the jeans in the closet, the jeans, the, the, the watch fell out of my jeans. And I, didn't, I wouldn't even know that if I had not decided to go and let those jeans go because they didn't fit me anymore. That's who they were. Wow. <laughs> it's true story. That, like, I even think that goes along with the, um, there's actual, like, universal law, the, the, the law of yes. flow. Going back to what we yes. talked about before, the law of flow. Mm -hmm. So when you, yes. um, what I was taught is when you create a hole, basically that's mm -hmm. what you're doing when you um, let something go. So that principle of function, mm -hmm. when you let something go, you're creating like a hole. So now it's like yes. as though the universe has to fill it because you created right. a space. So letting go exactly. of things, it could be things or whatever, you are actually help to bring opportunity in your life. Right, right. Oh, wow. I love okay. this. I love this. I love I'm this. I'm so, so happy. Yay, yeah. <laughs> I love this so much. All the connections that I made. Oh my goodness, Linda, I'm so happy that you um, decided to come on my show today. You have really, really enlightened me. I'm so happy too. Yes, thank Wonderful. you so much so for that. You did. You're welcome. You my pleasure where they could reach you, what your website is, and um, any other information that you want to share with my audience. Yes. My website is fengshuiinspirations.com, and my email address is fengshuiinspirations88 at gmail.com, and my phone number is 347-223-0532. I actually have a challenge on my, free, on my website. It's the three-day Jumpstart Your Life Challenge, so it, I give you three tips each day. I give you a few tips for three days. And that way you get to understand what's happening in your space with the clutter, relationships, and also tips on wealth. Nice. That is so nice. Wow. And it's for free. Yes. So definitely um, all, if you're watching this on YouTube, all of um, Linda's information will be in the description box below, her website. And um, you're on social media, so what's also your um, face if they want to reach out to you on Facebook or um, any other social media, what would that? Um, yes. How can they reach you? They can reach me on my Facebook page and Linda Boney, and then also my Twitter page, Linda Boney as well. Okay. Yes, and, and I'm gonna have. I'm also on Instagram as well. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yes, Linda Boney. Um, at Linda Boney on um Instagram. No, it's um at Linda Linda B five six eight. Okay. Well, all that information will be in um, the description box below if you're watching this on YouTube. And I'm going to have it on the screen as well. So definitely go check out her website. And um, definitely, um, if you're looking for a feng shui consultant, definitely connect with Linda. It's been a pleasure, Linda. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Keisha. I yes. really appreciate it. Had so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it was so much fun. <laughs> All right, everyone. Peace and blessings. I would like to thank our guest, Linda Boney, for coming on the show today. Thank you so much, Linda, for enlightening us all about the positive impacts of feng shui in our lives. And I would also like to thank you so much for watching this episode of Dropping Gems After Show. Holistic health and much abundance to you. See you next week. Peace and blessings.